when I grew up as a Christian, I encountered these two groups. The group that emphasized loving Jesus, building the relationship, spending time with Him, being in His presence. And then the other group that emphasized following His command, reading the Word, being obedient to the Word, working in ministry. And I felt like a, a struggle between the two. I felt like the one condemning the other and then the other condemning the, the other one. <laughs> and it's like, okay, which one is right? And then recently I read John 15 where Jesus addresses that issue and addresses both groups. When you read John 15, Jesus is using this illustration of the vine, the branches, and the vine dresser. The vine being Jesus, the branches being Christians, or people that follow him, and the vine dresser being God Father. Jesus says as branches we are in him and are supposed to bear fruit, but that there are branches in him that do not bear fruit. Meaning there are Christians in Jesus, there are people in Jesus, Christians, that do not bear fruit and that are taken away by God the Father. If the branches, the Christians, are productive and do bear fruit and help to build the kingdom of God, it says, Jesus says, that God the Father is pruning them, cleaning them, healing and delivering and restoring them so that they would bear more fruit, be more productive, be able to, to build the kingdom even more. So in other words, we Christians, the branches, are supposed to bear fruit. When you see a vine with branches, obviously, and leaves and everything, what's the first thing you look for? Does it bear fruit? Does it have grapes? Can I maybe snack one? Right? And that's what God is looking for too. He's looking for His branches, His children, to bear fruit and be fruitful. But there is a catch. In John 15 verses 4 and 5, He gives kind of like a condition to this whole situation. Jesus says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Jesus is basically making the point that we cannot be a branch on itself. We cannot just be a Christian disconnected from Jesus. We cannot just be there and expect to be productive for God. He says, you have to abide in me. If you want to be spiritually productive, abide in me. But there's a problem. Like I already said in the beginning, there are the Jesus lovers and then there are the Jesus obeyers. The Jesus lovers, you know, emphasize the abiding part. You have to abide in Christ. You have to build the relation. You have to love Jesus intimately before you are able to actually do something for Jesus. And then there are the people on the other side, the Jesus obeyers that say, no, you have to obey Jesus. You have to obey the Bible. You have to be productive. You have to work for Christ. And obviously for both sides, there are Bible verses that support their stance. For example, the Bible verses for the Jesus obeyers. There are verses like, if you love me, keep my commandments in John 14, 15. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. Basically he's saying, hey, if you really want to be loved, then keep my word, then obey. If you, want, if you really want to express that you love me, then obey and do the work. And on the other hand, you have especially the verses in the Gospel of John and in the Epistles of John, you know, about God's love and God is love, which is obviously that's 1 Corinthians. Both sides have these verses and both sides shame and guilt trip the other in their legalism and their religious spirit and in their self-righteousness. So which one is right? Well, as I understood Jesus in John 15, 
both are right. <laughs> I find it interesting because Jesus actually reveals a very nice balance between the two. And that's my point. It needs to have a balance. If you overemphasize one side, you will tip over on the other. We need to have both in our lives. We need to have the love of Jesus, the abiding in Christ, and we need to have the bearing fruits, the obedience, the following Jesus, and being productive in the kingdom. As Jesus says in John 15 verse 5, He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you cannot do anything, you can do nothing. It's actually like a cycle because when we abide in Jesus and he abides in us, then we bear much fruit. We do something for God, we do something with God, for God. Then, I already read it, God the Father prunes us, refines us, heals, delivers us, maybe even convicts us so that we would again abide in Him, come back to Him and be refined, be healed, be delivered, be pruned so that we then again would bear much fruit, more fruit, be more successful, be more anointed or, or more productive for God. It is a cycle, abiding in Christ, bearing much fruit, being pruned, abiding in Christ, bearing much fruit, being pruned, and so on. It's not an either or, or which one is first, the chicken or the egg, it's both. We need to do both. There needs to be a balance. If you want to bear fruit for Jesus, you have to abide in Him. When you truly abide in Him, you will produce much fruit. It's a logical consequence. But you also have to be warned that you can be a Christian and not bear fruit. You can be in Christ, but not be productive and spiritually successful, productive for Jesus. Like Jesus, in his ministry, he was out in the field, he was ministering, working in signs, wonders, and miracles. And then he had times where he just secluded himself, went into the mountains, or went in the field, or went to be alone with God. And oftentimes you can see whenever he was alone with God, after that even more signs, wonders, and miracles happened. Or he had a revelation about the apostles and you know chose them by name, which was awesome. So you can see there is a correlation between abiding and bearing fruit. So my encouragement to you is to spend time with God, to abide in Him, spend time in His Word, build the relationship with Him, and then share, share, share. Go out and share the Gospel. Go out and share what God has given you. Go out, even if it's your husband, or your child, or your, your co-worker, or your family, or whoever it is. Just share what God has given you. Give them an encouragement. Pray for them. Uh, maybe even prophesy for them, I don't know. Whatever God has given you, share it. Because then God will give you more and more and more. And this is what I'm trying to communicate on this channel. I spend time with God, I receive something, and then I use this medium to share what God has given me. And this is how these videos are inspired. See, I need my daily dose of Jesus. I need my daily dose of Holy Spirit, anointing, touch of God, to be able to do these videos and go through the day, have my focus, not just pray for people, I don't need time with Jesus to pray for people, but to have the juices flowing, so to speak. And honestly, it's also my source of creativity, my source for these videos, for my creativity for these videos and my writing on my website is Jesus, is time with Him, is time in His Word. Jesus is the reason I make videos on this channel and write my blog posts on my website to help people go from their life struggles to their spiritual empowerment in Christ. If you just stumbled upon this video and you want to see what this looks like in detail, you can just go through all my videos on this channel or you just Google my name and my website will pop up and you just go on my website and just go through my blog posts. By the way, I'm going to make two to three more videos about this very topic. So you should just go on and check out the next video because this will go in more detail about how to abide in Christ. See you in the next video.